Release the sequencer now. We have all green light. The rocket is armed. Minus 15 seconds. Kenya is open for space business. Recent partnerships with the Chinese, Italian, and the US space agencies show the increasing importance of Kenya to the global space community. It is one of the few countries globally with its own spaceport. The Kenyan Space Agency is also becoming one of the most proactive on the continent. Mass Society Kenya is focused on accelerating this progress by bridging gaps between the emerging private startup community and government plans. We look to make Kenya relevant to the global charge towards the moon and eventually Mars. We will do this by closing gaps in infrastructure university research, as well as knowledge and capacity for space startups and technology actors. Our proposed space city will play the role of a hub and important part in training and developing people and technology for the next phase of the spaceport. Kenya is still, you know, we would consider a developing country. Uh, they do have a space presence. They do. Ha they, the government does have an official, uh, you know, s small funded space program of sorts, and they're putting together a coalition where they can work. Their organization wants to work with their Kenyan government, and they want to work with other interested groups, and essentially restore and revitalize a couple of uh, launch areas and space areas that are either owned by Kenya or run as a joint venture between uh, University of Nairobi and University of Rome. It's run by Italy. And they want to start up a, basically build what they call a space city. So you'd have you'd have some launches, but you'd also have, um, you'd have lots of STEM education opportunities and other things. So I just want to go through that. They want to build a something similar to the Mars Desert Research Station. They want to build, uh, they want to use, they have a couple of existing space, potential spaceports that they want to use to uh, to get some local investment and some local contributions. And so it's a combination, kind of a public-private partnerships they want to set up to, uh, to help STEM education. For example, this thing uh, over to the bottom left of the screen, you'll see something that looks like an offshore platform. That's called, but they actually call that the Luigi Broglio Space Center. Uh, just off the coast in Melindi, and you see off to the right, they've actually launched rockets from there. And uh, and the uh, other the other the other image up, up above that is from a, the uh, a space center that has been a joint venture between the universities of Rome and Nairobi at San Marco Island, which is also off the coast. And they want to revitalize these things and turn them into major STEM education and and actual launch centers and make kind of a small space city is really their goal. Um, and though, so they have different types of ways in which the project can be implemented. They're actually the one I have highlighted in bold. That's uh, that's the one they want the most and probably has the best chance of success. Um, and again, as far, as far as sustainable global goals that you've seen, they've probably seen that image before. They're really focusing on this bottom two in the circle, uh, partnerships and a space and part of the space economy. Um, so ultimately, it would be open to the general public. They'll be, uh, they'll have a, they're going to have a membership option. Uh, they're going to raise their own team and train people, and eventually get to the point where, it, educationally, people can actually get certified to do certain, to do specific things, and help boost, uh, ultimately, a a, a, a all Kenya-based space economy. Um, and here's some of them, some of these guys that are working on some of these projects. Um, 
like robotics and a bunch of other things. There, there they are. They have their uh, flight suits on. They're they're all they're ready to fly. Uh, these guys. They want to build their own space academy one day. It's very uh, they're very ambitious. Um, and these are some of the things they want to build. You guys, uh, the first Kenya CubeSat is over there. Um, and they're going to be very selective about individuals. This is part of the construction that's been going on. Uh, this is in uh, Mombasa. They had a, uh, they built it. There was a, they're modeling their project out of something that went on in Mombasa and and other places. I think it was Mozambique. Uh, something was being built there, and they're kind of modeling what they want to do after that. Um, so. They want to set up boot camps, civil society organizations, and they anticipate, I put it this in there for them, they're, they're really, their first raise is to get about a million dollars US from various sources, public, private, government, or whatever it takes uh, to get that thing started. And here's a list of some of the organizations they're already working with. I mean, right out the gate, they've only been official since you know early January, and they're just moving like great guns. Harnessing the potential of the space industry by African states requires deliberate investment in both the upstream and downstream segments of the sector. Collaboration through foreign funding and public-private partnerships present an opportunity for the development of space systems and infrastructure. The private sector can also be supported to make such front investment. We all know Kenya is beyond knowledgeable and capable to operate the center, but may need a kickstart to start operations. We have the kickstart the country needs. Yeah, because we usually support um, support such 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 launches for SpaceX, Ariane 5, uh, for Vegas to use every this uh, rockets that usually are launched. So yeah, so that's what actually happened. The maintenance team is up there. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Kenya like the other space nations on the continent, as a young but promising space program that would benefit from strategic partnerships. We aspire to be a space-faring nation by 2030, and this aspiration is geared towards the development of human capital and competences, the development of strategic infrastructure and facilities to promote our abilities to maximize utilization of space, potential for wealth and employment creation, and three, to enhance sector competitiveness for global and regional space opportunities and the development of coordination and promotion framework for research and innovation in space science, technology and application. And we look forward to cooperating and partnering with all space community across the world. The San Marco Equatorial Range is a fully equipped range for the conduct of peaceful scientific investigation of space and the upper atmosphere. The range is available for use by any nation or organization interested in conducting space research and exploration. It is the role for which the San Marco Equatorial Range was conceived. It is the role the San Marco Equatorial Range accepts. It is the role which the San Marco Equatorial Range has achieved.